Okay, sorry about that earlier. Welcome back to my part two, <laughs> to my Jenny's Food Network. Okay, so I, as I was talking about relationships, so I had to track down, we had to, friend, my husband and I had to figure out what's the problem in our relationship. What's, like, where does it stem from? You know, for me, um, Freddie does, Freddie claims that I nag a lot and why. And for me, I feel very upset a lot, and it just builds up and it builds up. And I just felt like he wasn't participating enough in the family. He was neglecting the kids, neglecting me as a wife, neglecting the house chores, you know, because he was dedicating like 99% of his time to uploading his videos, doing videos as well, and working, training clients and stuff, you know, and there was not enough like time with the family. And even like when he's eating at the dining table, he would just be so busy in his computer and stuff, you know, and when I try to conversate with him, he'll just be, uh-huh, yeah, what? You know, like, like that all the time. And that irritates me to death, and I can't conversate with him, and he doesn't speak much to the kids, so I just felt like he's always working, you know. I know Freddie's a hard worker, you know, but it's very hard to spend time with him. So for me... I would feel very down a lot. I just felt like he didn't care about us or he forgot about us or he didn't appreciate us while we're here, you know. And it was just all bad miscommunication. And and also, for me, I would just build up so much anger and just completely being exhausted all the time. I would be so tired that I wouldn't even have energy left to exercise. I would be, it would be like almost midnight and I'm still cleaning dishes, you know or doing laundry or sweeping the floor, you know, it's just a lot of work, you know, and, and just being down and depressed and just feeling trapped in a situation where I just felt like I was just a babysitter, you know, as much as I enjoy spending time with the kids, regardless if they're good or bad, crabby, you know, upset or always fighting over toys, or whatever, or when they're happy, it doesn't matter. I always enjoy, you know, spending time with my children and I look forward to taking care of them, you know. That's fine on my end, you know, but at the same time, I was feeling down because I felt that the relationship from the father to the children, the father was not really there for the kids much, you know, he may be providing the finances for the family, but and then for me, I felt like I didn't have a husband, I felt like I was a single mother, you know, and... And we and I had just built up so much pain and anger in me that I would explode and lash out on Freddie a lot, you know, and he didn't like that. I would ask, like, can you help wash dishes? I'm tired. He'd be like, no, I'm tired too. I'm not washing no dishes. So he wasn't helping much on the dishes. Like, when he feels like it, he'll help out with the dishes. But he only does dishes, like, once or twice a month or not even at all. So, and, you know, I just get so overwhelmed sometimes and just burnt out, just really, really burnt out, you know. And it'll just be times when... He comes home from work, eats, and then does his computer work, you know, to a point that it's like sometimes one or two in the morning and he'll just go pass out sleeping, you know. And so him and I would not, would not even get much quality time together in that term, you know. So, you know, and over time things just got worse between us and I just felt that even when we went biking, as much as how Freddie and I love to bike when the weather's decent, you know, and the beautiful scenic view of the Lake Michigan, biking off the Lakeshore Path, seeing all the different beaches, and, and you know, it's a beautiful sunny day. I still was not feeling happy because the way things were going between him and I, I just felt that we were just falling apart. We were, I, I just felt very distant from him, you know. I felt that he just didn't love me as much like he used to. This is all like a mental state in my head, I understand, but because I just felt so disconnected, from him, I didn't even enjoy my time with him. Anything that he said irritated me. Anything I said to him irritated him. It was we were just both head bumping, you know. And and I didn't even care to even sit near him when I'm near him. When like when I catch up to him when he bikes, you know, because he bikes so fast in his um, fast speed bike. And I just don't even care to even want to come sit next to him. I don't even want to hug him. I don't even want to kiss him or tell him that I love him because. Actually, he just irritated me and annoyed me because I was just always so angry at him, you know? So when you have a lot of built-up anger and stress at your significant other or spouse, it will really take a toll on you. It will really show on how you treat the person. It will really show on how dis disrespectful you get to that person so easily. And it will really show how imp imp impatient you get. 
anything they say just goes out the other ear and you just take it the wrong way or, or you take things in a very negative way and you'll just lash out on that person. And that was the kind of relationship that I was having with my husband. You know, like I said, I could just keep this drama to myself and not share anything and act like I'm a perfect wife in a perfect marriage. That is not true, okay? I just want you people to know out there that relationships are very hard. So if, you're, if you are in a relationship, be prepared for drama. Be prepared to work things out. You know, you could so easily just be like, oh, I'm breaking up or I'm getting a divorce, you know? For me, that's how I was feeling. I just felt like, you know what? There's really no resolution between us. I just want a divorce. I need to get out of here. This is not a healthy envir environment for the kids where we're fighting all the time, arguing, whatever, or this is not even a good relationship for us to be in because it's abusively like very stressful to be around each other it's not good at all you know it's kind of like it's not good to be like stressed out at work all the time it's not good to be stressed out at home it's not good to be stressed out about finances you know so just in general when stress builds up everything crum crumbles down with it you know even if you have a good relationship with your partner and if you have a bad relationship with your boss at work or the co-workers there when you come home your mood is not going to be perfect. Your mood is not going to be so happy all the time, you know, and that could affect your relationship with your partner as well. So anyways, to get back to the point of, um, about relationship is what is the resolution? What do you do? You know, it's not that easy because if you are dating or if you're married and you have no children together, of course it's going to be very easy to just get in your car or just walk out the door and don't come back to each other, you know? It's very easy to just break up the relationship, you know? But what do you do when you have children involved? What do you do? It's very difficult. I, I just felt like saying all the time, you know what, I there's no resolution. I'm sick and tired of arguing. I want a divorce. You know, we have to break up the finances and figure out where we're going to live and so on. And the children, we're going to have to battle out in court, you know? All this stuff was going in my head. And these things were the type of things I was saying to my husband. Because I, I just felt like this is repetitive, re repetitive, this is redundant, what's going on in a relationship. You're not helping out around the home. You're not being a good husband to me. You're not being a very supportive father, making more time with the kids, talking to them, playing with them. You're just over, overly consumed with work here, you know. So what do you do, you know. So it turned out that we came up with resolutions and ideas, you know. And, and it turned out that he's going to, when he goes to work in the morning... And even before he even has to be at work, if he feels like he's up early in the morning and he needs to get some stuff done that's work-related, he could just leave early and just go to the coon where he works at, you know, and and he can get some stuff done there. Well, while it's nice and quiet, the clients aren't there yet, you know. And when his clients do arrive, they could do the training. And once training's over, he could stay after work and do more work or do more cleaning and cleaning there. He could clean, do the computer work, whatever he needs to do. Rearrange the place or whatever. And so by the time he's ready to come home, then it should be laptop free. All he has to do is just upload the videos that are that were already labeled at work. And so then he'll have time to spend time with me and with the kids, you know. So and when he has to go to work in the evening again, He's going to have to do what he has to do, organize and plan out what he needs to do to take care of the place, to clean it up or wrap things, wrap things up or upload videos or make videos, you know. And then so when he comes home, he won't have to do videos or upload videos and labeling it or whatever he has to do or check email, whatever, because he'll mainly, he'll mainly try to do that at work. So he had to really work hard on that because it's such a habit to work on the laptop all the time on his free time, which ends up being consumed. And then there's no time left for the kids and I with him. So now for the past few days, he's been doing, a, Freddie's been doing a really good job in organizing his time better. And so now we're able to sit down in peace, have lunch together and have dinner together and not be upset. And, and he's starting to make more effort to give me attention and talk to me when I want to talk to him, you know, and and the laptop is not there, you know. So it's really good that he had to try real hard to organize his time. So, you know, whatever problems you have, you know, in your relationship, really work hard on pinpointing down 
where the source is coming from. You know, is it about finances? Is it about your partner spending too much time, you know, with his or her friends too much going out and not making enough time to, to go out with you? You know, it could be about your partner is probably working too much that the person's forgetting to spend time with you and the children. That is if you have children together. So you have to really pinpoint why you're so upset. And sometimes you tend to forget because everything is so routine and everything has been gone on, going on for like several years or many years. And it's so re repetitive and so it's kind of hard how, and, it's, and things get kind of lost because there's so many things that are stressing you out. But whatever it is, you know, don't give up. You know, just talk to your partner. Mention or write a list of who's upset about what. And you just have to work it from there. You know what I mean? Because if you don't work it from there, believe me, you're going to grow to be a very bitter person like me. You're going to lose a lot of patience like me. You're going to be upset about just little things that just makes you explode like me. And whatever someone says you'll kind of twist it in your head and make it kind of like negative when it shouldn't be negative, you know? So a lot of stresses around you ends up becoming like a mental stress. And when you're mentally stressed, everything is downhill. You know, I can speak this because that's what I was going through. So, and the mental stress also leads to your physical stress because when you're so mentally exhausted and stressed, always unhappy and majority of the time just very angry and upset about everything and regardless if it's at work or work related family related or anything when you're mentally really stressed you're gonna be very physically stressed out because you're gonna be very tired you're gonna be very unmotivated to do anything your energy level has went downhill and your outlook in life is very dark gloomy sad, cold, and just a very unhappy world. And that's just a sense of you being under depression. And when you're under depression, it's very hard to get out of it. I'm totally serious. And you're not going to have any sense of motivation to want to live and to want to to look forward to your dreams of how you want to see your life. You know what I mean? But and it's more devastating if you have children involved because your children are going to need you. You know what I mean? So whenever you're feeling down, depressed, you know, and if you do have children, just at least please think about them. You know, think about if you left this world or if you killed yourself or if you went to drugs. Let's say if you went to heavy drinking and became an alcoholic you know, or you start doing some really bad drugs that's very harmful to your body and you start letting yourself go or if you start to gain like a lot of weight that you have become obese, you know, or you, or that you have forgotten about yourself to love yourself where you tend to not eat healthy foods anymore and you, and you start eating fast food too much and just not really taking care of your health. And pretty much just letting yourself go because you just don't care no more about yourself. So when you stop caring about yourself, how can, if you can't even care for yourself, how can you even care for your children? You know, of course, for me, I will always take care of my kids. I will always feed them, give them baths, do their laundry, treat them like kings and queens. You know, they come first, you know what I mean? And I still will do that for them. But then for me, there's no more time for me. I'm exhausted. I have no energy left. I've skipped so many days in a row to make time to exercise. Um, I, I don't even have the energy or motivation to eat healthy because I'm too tired. I'm too lazy to get up to go cook something healthy. I'm too tired to go to the fridge and make something healthy for myself to eat. You know, Yes, I will make healthy stuff for my children to eat, but sometimes I'm so exhausted that I don't even feel like eating sometimes. But then I have to eat because then I start feeling lightheaded. So all this domino effect, all this negativity, all this depression, all this anger, you know, figure it out. Where does it come from? Figure it out. Is it, is it the finances? Is it that your partner is not showing you enough love that you deserve or want? You know, is your, are you and your partner no longer intimate? 
you know, if the intimacy is very important to you, then you need to really express that to your partner. You know what I mean? Is Are there distractions when you're intimate with your partner? Are you not paying attention to your partner? Is your partner even expressing to you what he or she wants from you? Because if the intimacy makes you makes you feel closer to your partner, then you guys need to tell each other, I don't like it when you're watching TV when I'm trying to make love to you, or I want you to kiss me more because that turns me on more, or um, I want you to not eat or chat about weird conversations while I'm trying to make love to you, you know? Just anything. It's really funny because, you know, being intimate is supposed to be like a romantic moment, and you should be focused on each other, not on something else because that shows that you're bored you're not interested, you're not, a, you're not attracted to your partner, you know. It could give the wrong signal to the other person. And then while you're being intimate, it could be a complete turnoff. And there, and there goes another disconnection with each other, you know. So if you, can, if you cannot connect on an intimate level, that will be difficult in the relationship. And if you cannot connect, if you cannot connect through verbal communication, that's going to be really tough too. So, if you really love your partner, and if you're really madly in love with the person, or if you're really feeling like this person is the love of your life that you want to grow old with, then it, it sounds like it's worth the time to speak up. If you have to take notes, then do so. If you need to set an appointment to grab that person's attention, then really make the effort to call the person, talk to the person face to face. You know, this is your partner that we're talking about, you know? So if you really want to be, be with that person and grow old with, and you really love this person inside out, then you have to really work on it very hard. And if there are children involved, you better make sure that you do a really good job communicating, you know? And it's difficult when people go through a divorce and the kids separate. It's very tough on the kids, you know. They get sad, they cry, they get down depressed when they see the parents fight and argue, whatever, you know. Yeah, it is, it's very complicated. So, so far the resolution between my husband and I was he finally organized his time better where when he comes home, he won't be too focused on working. He'll just be spending time with the kids and I. You know, and when I'm busy doing videos now, he'll be doing his videos right now. So we have some sort of agreement or we have some communication saying that, you know what, I'm busy now, so go ahead and do your own work thing too, you know, so you stay busy. So now that I have my channel, Jenny's Food Network, going, I'm going to do my own thing as well. So, and my husband has his Freddy's Monocone Food Channel going on, so it's good. It works well now. So about the relationship thing, it's very tough. So... Just to let you know, you're not the only ones out there struggling in relationships. I am struggling as well. And, you know, for me, to be honest, I am very madly in love with my husband. I am very attracted to him. You know, we have our, we have our aggressive side. We have our soft side, you know. And like he said in his video, there's a lot of aggression in me. You know, there's a lot of gang in me as a female. And... It would be compatible with me if I did find someone who was more yin, who was more on the softer side, you know. So my personality is very extroverted and Freddie's more introverted. But now he's gotten more aggressive. He's changed over the years. That's fine. I have to adjust to that. But as long as him and I communicate what the problems are in our relationship, what I'm upset about, what I'm unhappy about, and what can be done about it, you know, that's what we're doing. We're fixing it. We're trying to work on it, you know. So, um, so it's been great communicating back with Freddie, you know. And I'm no longer angry. I'm no longer stressed out. I mean, stress will be there. It'll come at certain times in your life. But I'm talking about the anger and stresses that was going on around the home that made me lash out on him, that made me very angry at him. But he's doing a lot to make time for us more and, you know, talking to each other more respectfully, you know, instead of him and I swearing each other or yelling each other, you know, we're actually speaking in a more polite way, speaking more respectfully, and just being more patient with each other, and just completely being more loving to each other, you know, and you know what, who knows, maybe a few months later, or a few years from now, or 10 years from now, him and I can get into another big disagreement or argument about something. It could go upside down again, but it doesn't matter. As long as we want to be with each, with each other, as long as we are still madly in love with each other, as long as if we still want to 
be together to begin with, then we should have the energy and focus on each other and really make the effort to communicate to each other and not let our arguments or disagreements destroy our own family. So, um, like I said, it, it doesn't end here. You know, life continues. I mean, struggles will continue. So no matter what you're struggling in life, you know, just work on it, pinpoint where the source is coming from and what could be done about it, you know, and and if it involves another person or a significant other or even a friend or family friend, whatever it is, or a coworker in life, this, when you overcome a, when you overcome a struggle, it'll help that experience will help you deal with other drama in life. You know what I mean? So if you could work things out and learn to communicate more respectfully to each other, you could also use that skill at work or with other friends or when you meet new people at new places or when you hang out and you meet more new faces, that skill, that strength in you will come out. And you'll learn to better yourself in any way that you can to communicate better with people. You know, sometimes whatever you go through in life, that could be a big struggle. And if you overcome that, they'll make you a stronger person. They'll give you more self-confidence and they'll give you a feel of like, oh, life doesn't end here. It continues. You know, I've been through this. This is no big deal. You know, I could always work it out with people. I could always work things out in my head. I could always work things out in a way it could be beneficial to me and the other person. So whatever you go through in life, even if it's a negative thing that you feel or a downfall, don't worry. You, in order for you to experience the biggest down in your life, that's going to help make you a stronger person. Believe me, it will. Because how could you compare? You know, if everything is going so wonderful and great to you, then that's great. You know, congratulations. I'm happy for you. But when you go through struggles in life and things are not in your favor, don't worry about it. It's okay, you know, because that, that lesson there, right there, can help better you, make you stronger. It'll give, it'll give you a bigger idea, it'll give you like a quicker idea of how to deal with it, how to cope with it, you know? So don't forget, bad things or negative things, whatever you want to call it in life, can actually be a very good thing in your life, okay? It can come to your advantage by learning how to better yourself and not to make another so-called mistake if you feel that it was a mistake in life or a poor decision that you made in life, you know? Those things will make you prepare for the next step in life, you know, and to, and to learn from it. Learn, as, learn it as a lesson, okay? So that's all I have to say for now and today, and um, I will continue to do videos about expressing ideas or how I'm, how I'm feeling and, you know, what I'm going through in life and stuff. So, like I said, Jenny's Food Network is not only about food to eat, but it's also food for your brains, okay? About learning knowledge, you know, learning about my experiences, you know, and see if it relates to you and how it could help you. And it could help you brainstorm on how to deal with things in life, you know. Like I said, I could keep a lot of my struggles to myself, act like I'm perfect, nothing's ever wrong with me, I'm never stressed out, I'm not mentally, like, burnt out, you know, or, I, or that I'm a perfect wife or I have a perfect family. None of that is true. None of that is true. Nothing is perfect in my life, you know. But... But rather, I should... I'm perfect. Oh, there goes Freddy. He said he's perfect. Interrupting my video. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I just like to share that, you know, life is a struggle every day. You know, just deal with it. It's okay. You know, everyone goes through it. And, you know, just, just be strong for yourself, you know. You may be down in depression at times, but sometimes you just need to be uplifted. And, and it starts with you. You have to really start uplifting yourself and see the bright side of it, you know, whatever, whatever negativity, it will eventually pass, and you'll think back, like, wow, I was so angry back then, now that I've dealt with this drama, I feel better now, you know, now I'm moving on with my life, so don't give up on that, okay, thanks for watching my channel, really appreciate the support, okay, and don't forget to subscribe, thanks, baby Ken's over there, <laughs> take care.